Can you guys hear me? Okay, can you guys hear me now? Okay. I I was prepared, but you know, like seeing a lot of faces that I know, some is my friend, even my English teachers here, it's just hit different. So I hope that I'm not doing so bad with my English. Um, so um, hello everyone. Keeping a head down and real and working hard is not enough. That's something I realize when I look at everyone around me, like everyone here, everyone that I know, throughout these throughout ten years. And something I realize that everyone here, everyone's work hard, but someone is just making a lot less money than others. My name is Chi. I was born and raised here. I was walking down the same street as most of everyone here, um, 20 plus years ago. My uncle inspired me a lot. He was also someone who grew up in this city, just in a lot more challenging situation, where he didn't even have the electrical light to study. And then later on, he became one of the, most, one of the top experts in sustainable energy become an international speaker who can travel the world for work. And seeing someone that close to me doing those incredible things from a very humble background truly inspired me. So from carrying a dream to go to study in the University of Technology in Ho Chi Minh City, and then become an expert, an advisory expert like my uncle did, I am now 10 years later working and living in New York City, doing the work that I truly enjoy, especially having the opportunity to surround myself with the most talented people on this earth. And during those 10 years, the thing that I treasure the most is the opportunity to meet and work with amazing people, hearing great story from ranging from successful entrepreneurs, billionaires, politicians, to famous artists and celebrity, And I've noticed something, that everyone work hard. But some people, times, it's just so much more valuable than others. So today, I'm not gonna share much about myself. I want to share with you the, the two ideas that have motivated me throughout those 10 years, in the last 10 years. So I, after I realized it's not about the hard work, it is also about what we are working on and what we will be able to work on in the next few years. And then I asked myself the question, how can we get ourselves to the position to do more valuable work? But then first, let's ask the question, what make a problem, valuable even. So there's a basic concept, supply and demand, if anyone here study um, business or economics, um, but I'm just gonna make it very simple. Um, so just the more people pay us to solve their problem, right, the more valuable our times and, and solution we will become. And for the same exact mechanic, the more, the more people are capable of or willing to provide us the same, if not better solution, and our time and solution will become less valuable. And for those reasons, that's the reason why there's some jobs that get paid very little. Because a lot of people or anyone can do those jobs. So a lot of people that are willing to do those jobs with very little pay. And for the same exact reason, that's why some jobs get paid so much money because just simply because there's only a few people on this planet that can be trusted to fulfill those responsibilities. It is also about the impact of the solution. When you are at the position to make decisions that will impact a multinational corporation, that have a billion dollar in revenue, right? Your decision to make that corporation 1% better will result in a hundred million dollar in value at or destroy it. 
the CEO of the multinational corporation and the, the owner of the coffee shop, they are all busy. They all wake up, they have 16 hours a day. They are all busy, they are all doing a lot of work. But the decision of the CEO you were just a lot more impactful than you know, the, the owner of the coffee shop. And then the question is, then how can we get ourselves to those positions, those positions that can make impactful decisions, right? And my approach is start to start from picking the right thing to focus on. So I always ask myself two questions before I accept doing anything. It's just how much that I can learn or how much that I can earn. Putting myself to the position, to the job, to the projects, that I can learn a lot. I can learn the valuable skill, the transferable skill, that allow me to solve the problem faster, more efficient. Or those knowledge that will enable me to create a solution for even bigger problem. Being aware of, the, being aware of what we are working on every day. And ask the question, will the, the skill that I'm acquiring today is going to be effective, it's going to be valuable in the next two or three years if I continue to do these things? Because the truth is, is no matter what you do in life, from playing video games, from playing basketball, playing soccer, or doing good work, or doing meaningful work, doing podcasts, you will pick up skill. But some skills are just a lot more valuable than others. Or I can have to earn a lot of money doing those things. Because I can use those money to buy back my time. There's a concept of buying back my time which everyone here can look at how much money that you get, you're getting paid every hour or every year. That's how much money are you selling your time for. And ask yourself the question, is that much money is what you want to sell your time for, or it's just a lot, a little bit cheaper than you want. If you feel like the time that you're selling is not that expensive, or it's not as you, how, how expensive you want, then try to find the money. I can save up the money asking parents, borrowing from parents, borrowing from the bank, take student loan, or however. And after you can find the money, buy back your times, and use those times to develop your valuable skill, to improve yourself, to make yourself into someone that can solve valuable problems. Here is the, this moment is, is where I want to take, slow it down, and want to appreciate my parents and everyone's parent for supporting financially, emotionally. When we was a little kid, we couldn't do anything valuable for the society, but it's having an opportunity to go to school for an education and become more valuable pe person and people, right? So the hard work of wonders seem to make small difference, if not zero difference, day by day, because it, sometimes it, it just feels like it doesn't matter how hard you study or how hard you work. You're going to go to the same school tomorrow, next year. You're going to do the same job next month or next week, right? It just would a little better grade in the grade books. But those grade in the grade book and the ability and that help you to solve the exam problem will decide what school that you're going to go next or what job that you're going to do next. And those is the moment that your leverage starts to change. So you might, someone might ask the question, what's the leverage even, right? So the leverage is the concept that with the same amount of input, you can magnify your result multiple times compared to, to without having any leverage, having no leverage, both in the positive and negative direction. So some example of the leverage can be when you pass a good exam, it gets you into a good school. After you get to a good school and you study hard, you do doing good work, it gets you a good job. And putting yourself, having the opportunity to be in those environments allow you to learn from greater teacher, greater boss, greater mentor. Right? Hanging, around, hanging out with 
a better group of friends who's gonna tend to and more likely to do more meaningful work, to do more meaningful activity. Because although if you don't get, put yourself into those environments, then you gonna end up spending your time and energy doing different things, doing other things. And then again, right, we're gonna pick up skill, just some skills more meaningful and more valuable than others. Another example can be when you sell a good business, when you create and sell a good business or create a good event. Those successful and achievement will act as a leverage that you know, gain you trust, gain you more trust from others, gain your reputation. So that is actually a leverage that allow you to raise more money for your next idea or call more for more sponsorship for your next event or next projects. The list can go on and go on with network, money, and reputation. What the leverage give you the ability to achieve goals with less effort or achieve a little more with the same amount of effort. And people tend, there's a quote saying, people tend to overestimate what they can do in the short term, but underestimate what they can do in the long term. And to explain the concept of compound growth and compounding effect, I would use something that I think most people like, um, is money. So let's imagine you have $100 and you will earn 10% on that $100 this year. By the end of the year, you're gonna have 110, and then for the next year, you're gonna earn a little bit greater interest with the same amount, 10% interest. And for 2006, 2026, you're gonna earn $12, and by 2030, you're gonna earn $16. So because, because you have a little bit more money by the end of each year, 10% of that a little bit more is also give you a little bit more money next year. So that's the concept of compound growth and compounding effect. So there's a formula on the right, but don't worry, we're not doing any math problem today. Um, it's just that there's a way to calculate this and you know, to, just to make my point um, for later slide. So when we apply the same principle or the same approach to personal growth, right? When we are a little bit smarter, when you know a little bit more, we tend to learn a little bit faster. We tend to understand things a little bit better. We tend to do the work a little bit more efficient, get more things done a little bit every day. And you might ask the question, how much of the difference just a little bit every day or every week or every month will com compound over the long run. So let's imagine that I am someone who can get 1% smarter every month compared to everyone here who can get 2% smarter every month. Just, so you got to do just 1% more than I can, right? Just 1% smarter. The, here is how much that 1% compounding monthly that will give you. After 10 years, I just need to be 1% smarter to be three times better, which in my time might be three times more valuable. But everyone down here, you guys just do 1% better than I did. But then you guys will grow 11 times, which means you guys, your t everyone here times will be worth three times, even four times more than I, I, I can earn. That's where we can see, you know, the people go to the same school with us doing the same job with us, after 10 or 15 years, start going places and do incredible things in life. For a little longer time frame, it's gonna be 30 years, and the gap's gonna get even larger. You can see here, like it's the 15 time difference between me and everyone here. 15 time is the difference between someone who can earn $100,000 and almost $2 million. And of course, there's a lot of math go behind it. Um, for example, like if you get distracted early, like you, you have family early, so you have 
you know, disease early or you not really spend a lot of time um, priority the growth and do something else, that's totally fine. But, you know, like the growth is going to start, the gap is going to be a little bit smaller. Um, so this, it, my point in this slide is also want to show you how important of the consistency of the growth over the, over the long, long times. Um, please keep in mind that I know there's going to be a lot of factors that can go behind this, this model that can improve it, which limited by my intellectual capacity, time and energy. So um, this is just my simplified version with uh, the effort that demonstrate the importance of pace of growth and the consistency of growth. So what leverage help you magnify the output to achieve greater pace of growth? The compounding effect will mount those different, those small difference to a substantial level over time. So that's, that's the idea, that's the two ideas that, you know, have keep motivating me in the last 10 years every day. And however, there's just small note that the leverage have their own expiration. So the leverage is, you know, the, the example that I gave earlier, uh, any achievement that you have, um, such as, you know, like, for example, you get an IA on TOEFL or any standardized exam, they expire after two years. So after two years, if you want to put those on your application, you have to retake them again, right? Um, graduating from the good school, landing a good internship or a good job. After you get those achievements and, uh, and you don't do anything in three years, People will start ask the question, what have you done in the last three years? And if you cannot find a good answer for it, the, your earlier achievement will start to be irrelevant. The same applies to creating or selling a good business, you know, where creating a good selling uh, business where, you know, like you create a business and you sell it successfully, you will gain reputation and trust from other people. So that allows you to raise more money. But after you done that, 10 years later, you don't do anything in those 10 years, and then you come to people with new ideas. People might start asking, doubting about your capability of doing a good work. They will ask the question and doubting that you know your skill and experience will be relevant to the current market where technology development is, is changing rapidly every day. I use some ChatGPT to create the uh, illustration for this slide, by the way. Um, so I am um, keep up with the technology. Um, you might say, okay, but, I've, but then you still can earn some money, right? Money, they, they also have their own expiration. So for example, if you earn $100,000 60 years ago, which is worth a million dollars today. It's a lot of money. Um, but $100,000 today, it just equal to, if not less than two years of salary of an entry level job in New York City. So for, imagine that you earn a fortune 60 years ago and you don't invest, you don't do anything. Those money from a fortune, now it's just a small amount of money that anyone can earn. Right? It's not a lot of money. So I used to put a lot of emphasis on setting goals and working long hours. Just to realize that setting goals, although they are a very effective and powerful tool to motivate, to push yourself a little bit more every day, it's not a reliable tool to measure our self personal development. And then I become a fan of measuring growth, where I can feel it, right? Everyone here can feel it through self-reflection every week, every day, every month, every year. We tend to do these, those self-reflection things this time of the year, right? Um, so you can feel it, you can know it, you can estimate it, and it's, it's, more, it's easier to measure. And also understand about the compounding effect that give me all the confidence to just focus on acquiring more leverage. Try to use and get the most out of those leverage while they last. And then also try to find another leverage before my old leverage expire. And 
knowing that the compound growth will take care of itself. And some of you here might ask the question, my feeling right now, like, oh, how if I am a little behind my friends? I am falling behind some of them. Will I be ever able to catch up? The answer is always yes. As long as you know, we start to being aware of what you're spending your time for, what are you developing for, what skill are you getting this year, today. And knowing those things just you know, help me stop overthinking about who I want to become, who I want to catch up. But start focusing a little bit more, going to bed happily every day, knowing that I wake up that day, I learned something, I did some good work, I, and then I go to bed a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser. So the, the answer is always yes, as long as we be consistent with our growth and try our best every day. And the thing, and to conclude, I will leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Henry Ford. Whether you think you can or you cannot, you are right. Thank you.